You're listening to Lore and Legend, the Halloween specials. This is the tale of the wife of Usher's Well. There once lived a well-to-do woman in a place called Usher's Well. She had three stout and stalwart sons she called her own, and it came to be that these three sons were called up to fight for king and country in the Great War. Now they had not been long in Flanders fields, scarcely six weeks to the day when news was brought to their mother dear that their bodies lay deep in the cold clay. Death, cold death, had reached out his hand from the barrel of the machine gun and swept her babes away from her. And when the parson from the town tried to comfort her, to him she said, I'll ne'er believe in God above, nor the Christ, nor the Trinity, lest they send back my own three sons the same as they went from me. I wish that the wind it would never cease, nor flashes in the storm, till my three sons return to me in earthly flesh and form. Well, it was very close to Christmas night, when the evenings are dark and long, that three strangers came to Usher's well, walking by the light of the moon. Their heads were covered with hats of bark, bark that never grew on any green hill, on any dike or any earthly shore, but which came from the north side of the tree that grows by the gates in paradise. The rain had fell in long sheets upon the road that wound up to the village. Not a light burned in any window or crevice, for the townspeople would smash any lantern that broke the blackout. Now the wife listened to the sound of the howling wind and the rain on the roof tiles as she lay in bed. As the water ran down the slate, bitter tears ran down her cheeks and the halves of the place lay cold, and her daughter crouched in the kitchen, forgotten, cold and hungry. In the prayer and the curse that she had pronounced, she was repeating it to the ceiling in the dark, when in the next moment there sounded from the kitchen below a sharp and rattling knock. The wife's eyes went wide, she sprang up, and once she was certain, the knocking answered her prayer. She hurtled down the stairs, she threw open the kitchen door, and there, crowded beneath the door's wooden lintel, stood three men, in strong boots, trench coats, round shallow helmets, their thin bony fingers clutched canes of birch that pointed at the sky. Her heart swelled. She cried out joyfully to her daughter, standing by in grim and watchful silence, to build up the fire, throw open the pantry door. Oh, blow up the fire, my bonny lass, fetch water from the well. Under this roof we shall all feast, since my darling boys are well. Well, in truth, their wide smiles were wide like long grimaces, and they stared at her with eyes which were as dark and as deep as foxholes. But when she looked at them, the mother with her own eyes saw only her three children restored to her, standing in their own true selves once again in her doorway, just as she had dreamed, just as she had prayed. 
So the table was laid with bread and beef and cheese, and she poured out flasks of water and wine, and she sat her three sons down at her table to eat and to drink together, just as they had done once before. When her children sat, their fingers clinked on the silverware and the china cups. When they picked up the bread and tore it with their teeth, it fell from their mouths unchewed. And when they raised the cup up to their fleshless lips and poured the red wine into their mouths, it did not run down their throats, but splashed through the ribs in their chest wetted the toes of their feet. There was silence, and then they spoke. We cannot eat your bread, mother. Your sin of wine can we take. It's been so long and so many a day since you our meals did make. So the wife of Usher's well took them upstairs, and she made their beds in their old rooms, and she spread them with her best and her whitest sheets to help them go to sleep. She drew her own mantle tight around her shoulders, sat down by their bedside, there in the deep of the night, just so that she could watch them sleeping in their beds once again. But though they lay upon their beds, they could not close their eyes. All was still. And though their mother's breath hung heavy in the chill air, it was the only sound in the room. No rest, no rest, but with the Lord, of her can we take. It's been so long and so many a day, since you our beds did make. And they slept not through the long hours of the night. There was only the shadows and the cool gleam of the sheets, of bones, and of moonlight. Nothing broke the stillness, until the blood-red cock in the yard rose and cried, and then the grey cock in the yard after it. The youngest son turned then to the eldest and said, Brother, we must and the eldest turned to his mother and said, Mother, we must go, for the cock does crow, and the day does show, and the generic worm does chide, and we must go from Usher's well to the gates of paradise. The sun it rises red as blood, and the moon is fled to the west, for heaven is calling us home, Mother. And all your tears will let us rest. So then uprose her three dead sons, and they placed their shallow hats upon their heads. And they walked to the door of the house to go from there to the gates of paradise. And as they crossed beneath the wooden lintel, so they did call out. You've been listening to a lore and legend Halloween special, The Wife of Usher's Well. Your storyteller today was Rick Scott. Music in this episode was performed by Robert Bentall, with the use of additional music and sound effects from the community at freesound.org. You can find a full list of audio credits on our website. For more information on the lore behind the tale, visit us at www.loreandlegend.co.uk. A massive thank you to Paul Jackson, 
whose support on Patreon gives financial fuel to the development of our stories. How much do you value and enjoy episodes of Law and Legend? You can help us to create even better episodes with more original stories, research and music by contributing to the cost of making each episode. If you'd like to become one of our supporters, go to the Law and Legend site and click on Support Us for full details. That's all for now, and once again, thank you for listening and for letting us tell you our stories. We must go for the cock does crow, and the day does show, and the chattering worm does chide. And we must go from Usher's well to the gates of paradise. The sun it rises red as blood, and the moon is fled to the west. For heaven is calling us home, mother, and for all your tears we cannot rest. <laughs>